um, the world is going insane. But what are Christians doing right now? That's the real question. The question isn't what is the world doing. The question is what are the Christians doing? So I'm going to start in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. And I'm going to read the first five scriptures out of the Amplified Version. Because it kind of breaks it down a little bit. It says, Therefore, I strongly urge the elders among you, pastors, spiritual leader of the church, as a fellow elder and as an eyewitness called to testify of the sufferings of Christ as well as one who shares in the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not motivated for shameful gain, but with wholehearted enthusiasm, not lording it over those assigned to your care. Do not be arrogant or overbearing, but be examples of Christian living." To the flock set a pattern of integrity for your congregation. And when the chief shepherd, Christ, appears, you will receive the conqueror's unfading crown of glory. So he's talking to the leader. He's talking to the leaders here. He's talking to the pastor of the church. He's saying, look, live by example. Lead the people of God by example. There's a lot who say, uh, pretty much do as I say, not as I do. And they want to be the ones to tell you what to do, but they themselves won't do it. So he called them out. He called those kind of people out. He also called out the ones that are in it to make money. He called them out. He called out the arrogant ones, the prideful ones, the ones that, you know, think that it's because of their position that they can just throw around their um, little power. So in the first four scriptures, he's talking about just being an example. He's talking about love and tend to the people that God has entrusted to him. It's a scary thing to think that you're responsible for God's children. It's a very scary thing because you know what? God takes that very personal. Whatever is done to his children... He takes it very personal. It's just like a mom or a dad and somebody's trying to hurt their kid. The mom dad's just going to stand around and let it happen. (laughs) No, not at all. They're going to step in. So he's talking to the leaders in this first one. And he's pretty much saying, look, love the people of God. And then it starts in verse 5. Verse 5, it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. There was a whole lot of Christian cuss words in there. (laughs) Submit, submit, and more submit. (laughs) You know, so here he's talking about, he's talking to those that, are either in lower ranks, either through position or experience. So either you can literally be younger or anybody under the position of a pastor. So anybody lower than that, that's who he's talking to. In other words, all of us. (laughs) Nobody's out on that one. So he's saying, submit. Submit yourselves to your elders, to your spiritual leaders. Submit means yield to the authority of your spiritual leaders. He is talking about, yes, we are all equal when it comes to God, right? There is no Greek, no Jew, no man, no woman. In the spiritual sense, we're equal. But when it comes to, we all have different functions and responsibilities. That's what he's talking about. So because we all have different functions and responsibilities, we must subject ourselves to those that are over us. Why? Because it helps us accomplish a common goal. And that gives us the mind of Christ. Jesus came. He had the mind. And he said everything the Father told him to say. And he did not deviate from that. 
The Holy Spirit comes and he leads us to Christ. God is a perfect example of what submission is. And God is a perfect example of, of just submitting to one another. So because Christ does that, the Holy Spirit does that, um, I can only imagine that they expect that from us too. You know what I mean? We're not greater than God. We're not greater than God. So yes, in a ministry, in a church, in a um, family, in a body of Christ, we all have different responsibilities. We all have different abilities. We all have different gifts. You know, so let's say, for example... Um, you're good with kids and you're the leader of the children's church. So anybody under that, your teachers must submit to that authority. That teacher submits to the elder of the church. You know, it's like a trickle effect. But all of it is used to keep the church of God running smoothly. God's will and purpose is being accomplished in the in the body of Christ because if we're not submitting one to another and if we're not submitting to the authority God has placed then we're chaos ourselves the world is in chaos the body of Christ should not be in chaos it should be rightly in order but that's us it requires us you know like in a home if they don't submit to each other's functions there's chaos. There's always fighting and there's always resistance and there's always um, a bunch of problems. So anywhere we go, we need to submit ourselves to the different um, uh, things that are going on in that moment. And then he says, clothe yourself with humility. That means esteem yourself small. Don't think more than you, don't think more of yourself than you are. The lesser we think of ourselves, the better we are. Because when we are with other people and we think more about them than ourselves, then we're not going to have any problem submitting. We're not. But if we think that we have a little bit of say-so and we start thinking, hey, I'm more important, and if we start thinking all this stuff, clothe yourself with humility, for God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble that means he gives favor to those that have a reverence for God. If we have a reverence for God, as annoyed as we might get, we still know our place. <laughs> and we're not going to overstep those boundaries because the Holy Spirit is going to be all upon us. And my fear for God is going to keep my mouth shut. It's going to keep my mouth shut. It's like, mm, I really want to say something right now. I really want to do something right now, but my reverence for God is going to keep me in check. I'm going to be in check because I am submitted. I'm submitted first to God and then to the people, to whatever God wants to do in whatever area God has me. And then it goes on in verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time so place yourself under the hand of God because it's the hand of God that has the power to move things so if you're in a situation where you're feeling oppressed if you're in a situation where you're feeling like people are just coming against you or things are not going right or people are talking about you if you feel all that stuff and you you put yourself under God under his hand it's his hand that's going to move the situation around. It's his power that's going to move on your behalf. He says, so that in due time, he will exalt you. That means he will raise you to a condition of prosperity, dignity, and honor. Remember Solomon, he prayed for wisdom, and God gave him honor and riches and all that stuff. He's not talking about, oh, I'm going to make you rich so then, you know, you can go and just, you know, blow it all and do all this stuff. No. He's talking about giving you all your needs. Bringing your needs to you. Fulfilling the needs and some. 
it's like right now God has restored so much in our home, and I'm just like, wow, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. And God's still doing it. I didn't go looking for it. It came to us. That's the hand of God. And he'll give you dignity and honor. And guess what? He'll also make things right for you. If you are being wronged, he'll make it right for you. That's the hand of God. It's not my power. My power messes things up more. <laughs> I mess things up more when I put myself in it. But I just say, Lord, you got this. He makes it happen. And then it goes on. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. That means throw upon him your anxieties and those cares that bring disruption to your personality and state of mind. Anything, okay, anything in your life that gives you an anxiousness. Because when we're anxious, we no longer have peace. We don't have the peace of mind anymore. All we're thinking about is our problems. And then we're starting to try to figure out ways to fix them. And then it just gets worse. And when we have anxiety, then we get frustrated. Then we get angry. And then all these other emotions come up. And we're not being ourselves anymore. It's all of a sudden we start to shut down. We start to close down. Or we start to go off on everybody. It depends on who you are, you know. But one way or the other, you are not being yourself. It's bringing disruption to your personality and your mind. You're not sleeping well. You know, you're going through things. You're constantly thinking, you know. Have you ever been there where something consumes you so much that you're always thinking and that's all you think about? And people are talking to you and, like, you're like, oh, what? I'm sorry, what? Like, all day long, you know? Why? Because your mind is on other things. It's no longer on God. It's no longer on the power of God. It's no longer what God can do. It's now my anxieties, my worries, my fears, my doubts, all these things are taking over. And that's not what God wants. He's saying cast those cares upon God because he is concerned for us. That's the amazing part. The God that created the whole universe, the world, the earth, the people, everything in it. He knows you individually. How mind-blowing is that? I mean, like, there's so many people in our lives and sometimes we're like, oh, they look familiar, but I can't remember their names, right? But he knows us, and he cares personally about what's bothering you. And that, I'm just like, wow, God. You know, sometimes, like, you know, we're, we're those kind of people, at least I am. I don't want to bother you. So, like, I don't want to tell you what's going on because I don't want to bother you. I don't want to put more burden on you, you know. That's just my pride. But in reality, he's just like, bring it. I want it. I want to know. I want you to come and bring it to me because it's my hand that can do something about it, you know. But we just have to let him. And then he goes on. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Be sober and vigilant. That means be watchful and alert to the dangers will, which will keep you from slacking in your faith and conduct. If we are not in tune with God and his spirit, believe me, the enemy comes in very slick. He's been around from the beginning of time. He has studied humans and all of our stupidity from the beginning of time. You know what I mean? There is nothing new that we have done. There is nothing new. It's just intensified because of social media. <laughs> but in reality, all this sin has been around. He comes in when you're not alert. He comes in and he brings old, old little habits back. Watch it. Watch it. All of a sudden, things from your past pop up and you're like, 
like, how did that happen? All of a sudden, old habits are trying to creep in. How did that happen? You know, I've been away from that for a while now. What are you doing back over here? You know, I thought I left you way back there. He's saying be watchful and alert. Because if you are not, you won't have the red flags. You won't be alert to the dangers that are going on. So if the enemy is all around you and your Holy Spirit sensor is not on, or at least it's kind of like not all there, you're totally going to be able to fall into bad habits. And your faith and your Christian conduct are going to be sloppy or shaken. Why? Because our eyes have been taken off of Christ and they have been put on our issues. And we are so disrupted within ourselves that we're not even realizing when these dangers are in. We're not even realizing when the enemy is like, oh, they're down. Perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity. He, he plays dirty. You guys know that? He plays dirty. He waits till you're down. Why? Because he wants to catch you slipping. That's what he does. Remember on the street, they're like, don't, make me, don't, uh, don't let me catch you slipping. Right? That was the word on the street. Don't let me catch you slipping. In other words, the moment you don't um, sense me coming, I'm going to be right there. And that's what the enemy does. The moment you don't sense him uh, coming is the moment that you're getting set up for a trap. But if our eyes are on God, if our relationship with God is there, God will expose it. God will expose it. So many times I get this check in my heart, like that doesn't feel right. That doesn't feel right. And everything inside of me is like, no, no, like it's ringing. Hello, listen. I can make a choice. I could be so caught up in my emotion that I ignore it because I'm like, you know what? I don't even care right now. Or I choose to humble myself before God and say, God, like, you got to do something about this. You got to remove this. I, I don't want it. So be watchful because otherwise your faith is going to be shaken. And your conduct, your Christian conduct is going to be tainted. You see the Christians, you see them doing good, and all of a sudden, you see them kind of worldly and carnal, you know what I mean? And you're like, what happened to you? And then you're talking to them, and they don't even catch themselves that they're not even right. I mean, I guess it does pay off to um, be an observer, you know what I mean? Like, I observe. So I observe the way people talk. I observe the way they act. I observe. And you can tell when the relationship with God is not all there. Why? Because they're acting different. And they're not acting good. They're acting more like the world. So we have to keep alert. Because he walks around like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour. Figuratively, this is talking about. He wants to squander and he wants to waste your purpose. If he can get you so distracted off of the purpose of God for your life, then he's already won. Because you were on track. Like you had this, okay, God, you spoke to me. You showed me this vision. You showed me what you wanted me to do. Like I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm moving towards it. I'm letting you do this. I'm letting you um, work inside of me. And then all these cares come upon me, and all of a sudden, the enemy's always on my back. And before I know it, I'm way off track. My purpose was that way, straight ahead, but now I'm way off to the left. Now you're going to be like, how do I get back on, if you even catch it? If you catch it. The only way you're going to catch it is if you have good people in your life that's like, hey, what's up? What's going on? You know, what's going on? I'm praying for you. Let's pray. You know, um, we need those kind of people in our lives. And we need a personal relationship with God. 
Because that's the only way we're going to make it all the way to the end. That's the only way. Because he wants to make you squander and waste your life. Even if you're wasting just on serving. And the serving you're doing is, has nothing to do with your purpose. Even in that, we can't get too caught up being a Martha that we forget to be a Mary. We can't get too caught up. Even in that, we can squander what God was truly intentionally trying to do in our lives. And then it goes on in verse 9. Resist him. Resist the devil. Steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. He's saying be immovable. Be immovable in your faith. In Christ and his word. When the enemy is coming in strong, that is not the time to buckle. That is not the time to stop your fighting. That's actually the best time to stand. Don't be moved. Don't let your faith be shaken. Yes, when things are not going our way, when things seem like they're falling apart, when the world is falling apart. Don't lose your faith in God, in who he is. He is God Almighty who sent his son to die for us, to have forgiveness, and to give us a home. That's what he came and did. So let us not be moved when the enemy's coming in. Don't let us be moved and start focusing on everything else. Resist him. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. That means we're not the only ones going through it. We're not the only ones going through it. I've talked to a few people in different cities. And we're going through the same things. We're experiencing the same spiritual battles. Not just what's going on in the world. We're talking about spiritually. The enemy's coming in and lying. The enemy's coming in and trying to take away from us our joy, our peace. He's trying to take this away. And when I heard that, I'm like, oh, God, thank you. You exposed the devil. Here I am thinking it's just me. You know, I talk to others and they're going through the same thing. I'm like, wow. All right, it's on. That gave me that fight. That gave me the drive to be like, oh, I'm not going to roll over. (laughs) I was thinking about it. You know what I mean? I was thinking about it. But it's like, I'm not going to roll over. I've never been that tight, you know. Yes, the devil might have you on the ropes, you know, and just kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. But guess what? If the devil takes you out, he's going to take out somebody else behind you too. And that's the only thing that gives me the fight. It's like, oh, no, you ain't going to go after them. Like, you know, we're going to go. We're going to go. But you're not going to get them. And that's how God works. This is why it's important for us to think of others more than ourselves. Because sometimes that's the only fight we have. Sometimes it's that love that gives us the courage to resist the devil, to be immovable, to keep standing, to keep fighting. If we're real on the streets, I'm sure most of us weren't the type of people that just let people come and just sock us in the face and we're like oh okay I'm sorry you know what I mean like uh, I doubt it why are we letting the devil come and do all these things to us and we're just like oh I'm sorry devil I'll move out of your way like no you know stand stand in the way stand don't let him move you but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory By Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Do we realize it is the trials that we go through? Those are the very things that strengthen us. If we didn't go through anything in life, we would have no strength. We wouldn't know how to fight. We wouldn't know how to make good decisions. We wouldn't know how to fall, get up, dust ourselves off, and try again. We wouldn't know how to do that 
if everything was smooth sailing, honestly, it would be boring. It would be boring. And we would be the ones looking for trouble, you know, because some of us that get bored, we need something to do. <laughs> so then God says, okay, you need a challenge. Let's trial time. You know what I mean? Trial time. And sometimes these trials feel like they're taking forever. You've been there. Or you're like coming up for breath or for air, and then here comes another one. And you're like, you know, like wave after wave after wave, you know. And you're like, can I take a break, <laughs> you know. But it's the trials that actually strengthen us. Because it says, after you have suffered a while, that means all this will pass. Your trials, your sufferings, your struggles, they will pass. If we cast our cares on him, if we let God be number one in our lives, they will pass. And then God will strengthen you, perfect you, establish you, and settle you. That means that through the trials, God is making you as you should be or who you were intended to be. Do you realize that in the trials, your true self comes out? Yes, the ugly comes out too. Yes, okay. But at the end, towards the end of our trials, we'll see the ugly start to go away and the beauty start to come forth. More love is being poured in. More fruits of the spirit is going into you. And God is making you who you were intended to be. He is making you suitable for the purpose God has given you and not deficient. That means where you think you don't have enough of a certain quality. Have you ever been in that place of, oh, I'm not like them. They have this. They have better than me. They, are, they have more skills than me. They have more talents than me. Like, you know, that's what I used to be like. You know, like, I can't do this, God. I can't get up there. I don't even like people. <laughs> don't make me do this, you know. So what does he do? Okay, trial, learn to love. Trial, learn to love, you know. And then I'm like, okay, you know what, like, let me just get this because I'm done going through this, you know. And all the time where I felt like I wasn't good enough, all the trials that he put me through, it forced me into realizing it's not about me. It's about God in me. If all I am is obedient, that's enough. God makes it enough. It's his word that goes forth. It's not my word. His word has the power, not my word. If all I am is obedient, he makes it enough. And when I'm going through the trials, and yes, it gets tough, I realize through those trials, more of God should be coming out of me. Not more of me. Because more of me is nothing but pride, anger, you know, ugly. Just ugly. But if more of God is coming out of me, that means that trial is doing exactly what it was supposed to do. If I still keep being prideful, okay, I'll let you take a little break. And here we go again. Until we're like, this mountain again? Like, how long am I going to go around the same mountain? And God's like, till you get it. <laughs> Until you get it, you know. And I finally got smart one day. When I finally realized I've been around the same mountain, like, I don't know how many years. I'm like, oh, you're not going to move it, huh? <laughs> uh, you're not going to move it. You're going to make me move it. You're going to make me conquer it through obedience. And he's like, ding, 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 ding. It's like, oh, all right. So this time I have to humble myself under the mighty hand of God so that he can create in me the woman I was always intended to be, a woman of God, a woman with godly character, a woman who serves God, a woman who lays her life down, a woman who picks up her cross, a woman who allows the spirit of God to work out fruits of the spirit in her. A woman who's showing more God and less her. 
that's what you always intended. And whatever my purpose is, it's going to come to the light at some point. But God cares more about our character than everything else. That's what he goes after. So if we think we're not good enough or we don't have the right skills, if God's asking you to do something and you're over here like, I can't do that. I don't have the right stuff. Guess what? Oh, he'll bring it all right. And he'll let you see you have the right stuff. He gave you everything you need if you just believe. If you just believe. Have you guys watched that one, um, Jumanji, the new ones? And that, um, that guy, he just pulls things out of his little, like, bag. And he's like, whoa, I didn't even know I had this. You know, when we're in God's purpose, that's exactly how it is. You're talking to somebody. The Holy Spirit's talking through you. You're giving them scripture. You're remembering scripture. And you, afterwards, you're like, I didn't even know I realized. I didn't, re- I didn't even know I remembered that scripture. You know what I mean? And you're like, Wow. If I try to remember that scripture on a daily basis, no, it ain't happening. But all of a sudden, God empowers me to do what I'm supposed to do. So if you're doing what you're supposed to do, don't look at what you don't have. Because God has given you everything you need. You have everything. And through the trials, he's going to bring up the power of God. It's through the struggle he makes us stronger and we become more fixed on him. Because he's saying, he prays that God, after you suffer, he will perfect you, establish, strengthen you, and settle you. So if you're already strong, he's going to make you stronger. Everything we go through is to bring us up a notch. God doesn't go into the comfort. You know what I mean? We get comfortable, he's like, time to kick it up a notch, time to kick it up a notch. And the moment you think you got a hold of something, the rug gets pulled out. And you're back on your face, back to, I don't know, nothing. Why? Because he needs you stronger and stronger and stronger. And the way the world is going today, we need to be stronger Christians who are immovable and whose faith is not going to be shaken. All of your anxieties, all of your cares, put them on him. Whatever the struggle, nothing is too hard for God. And know that God is for us and God is with us. So if we fix ourselves on him, there is nothing that we can't conquer because he's in front of us. He's leading us. That means whatever your issue is, God's going to give you the ability to overcome it. Amen. My God, we just thank you.